So I am Jeremy Goldcorn, Editor-in-Chief of SubChina. A quick note about our next panel. I grew up in South Africa and lived most of my adult life in China, which are two very different countries, but both considered part of the global south or in finance speak, emerging markets, or what Mao Zedong used to call the third world. What I sometimes call the rest of us, the people in Asia, Africa, and Latin America, whose countries barely get a mention in European and American news media and in their textbooks. But after years of being considered as destinations for aid, not trade, China has at last come to many developing countries seeking, seeing a market, not a cause for pussy. And although many of China's investments are controversial, they have put emerging markets back on the map and back in the news media. So who better to moderate our discussion on China's investments into the global south than Jerry Wang, founder and CEO of Haito Global. Jerry's been intimately involved in allocating capital in emerging markets, including China, India, Southeast Asia, Africa, and Latin America, through an emerging market credit fund and an early stage venture fund. Jerry founded Hito Global in New York in 2014. It's a technology-enabled global asset allocation platform which operates in the US and pretty much anywhere else in the world there is potential for growth. Jerry, over to you to moderate the panel. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, I really appreciate that SubChina organized the event and so we can share our views and the knowledge in the uh, China investment into Global South. So we have a, a great uh, panel thing we can miss. So we had to start with one belt, one road policy. So when it was started like seven years ago, it was really quiet. Uh, President Xi just announced internally, then gradually it's found out you know, into different regions, into Southeast Asia, into Africa, into Latin America. So I, I just wrote, uh, just read a number. Uh, China has made $755 billion investments uh, into those regions. So it's, it's very significant, uh, significant. So what's your view on the impact of those investments? Do you see them positive or negative? And uh, what's the impact on local economy? And uh, let's go around the panel, I'll, I'll first. That's great. I mean, many of the Belt Road initiative investments that were carried out by the government-owned, you know, state-owned banks or, or uh, you know, funds. Uh, for example, you know, the Asia Investment Infrastructure Investment Fund, the uh, CDB, and uh, a lot of those investments are are actually financing or loans, and in particular in uh, Latin America to Venezuela. And uh, so, first of all, what's your view on those investments or or loans or financing? And uh, what's their impact in the, in in Latin? And uh, I see there's a shift, you know, initially from the Chinese government side. They are less focused on Latin now. What's the impact over there? Right. So they don't see, you know, uh, Brazil more like a natural resource rich country. They see it as a, a consumer market now. And for example, Tencent, Didi, they invest in 99 Taxi, invest in New Bank. So this is a, a new area of private investments. In, in Latin America now, not just like directed by the by the states. Um, so that that was an awesome discussion. And uh, so the next topic will be on uh, global trade. So one uh, big event we can't miss is the, the U.S. China uh, trade talk has been impacting you know the global trade, global supply chain dramatically. And how how do you see that impact uh, global South investments? Are, are are you benefiting from you know? shifting the supply chain away from China into the other regions? And the, how do you see this going to play out with the, you know, the new president in place? Let, let's go around the, the panel one more time. Uh, I'll just start with you. Great. I mean, since the, the trade talk started three years ago, many of the multinationals and they have been executing <coughs> China plus strategy. You know, they keep their operations in China, but they're gradually shifting away and, and into other low-cost countries. And the, for example, like uh, India, Vietnam, Bangladesh, and uh, so, what's the impact uh, in in Latin America? Uh, are they are we like Mexico or or Brazil? Are they benefiting from the, from the chance? So, first of all, in in Tad, yeah, I mean, like Aubrey mentioned, let's hope this is not a zero sum game, and uh, everybody is benefiting. It's not that we're you know we're gaining on China's loss, and uh, actually, there's a new policy coming out of the. The Chinese government is called the dual circulation. So China is building actually two layers. One is continuing to participate in globalization, and other they are building internal consumptions and internal reliance on their you know technology developed in the country. 
I mean, this is going to be have a huge impact. It seems like China is trying to, you know, closing in and, and at the same time it's opening up. I mean, that's uh, we we will have to see how this policy is going to play out. But uh, definitely, that's uh, that's going to have a big impact. Maybe they're, you know, um, withdrawing from the from the the BRI initiative, and uh, we we don't really know what's the details on that policy yet. Just something. Uh, out there and that uh, we need to keep in mind. Well, let's move on to the next uh, topic that's uh, talking about the pandemic. So we know that, you know, the COVID-19 started in, in China and, and spread around and uh, impacting uh, different regions. And, and U.S. has been, you know, the new record of uh, over uh, 100,000 cases a, a day. And uh, in Brazil, India, and uh, they've seen it over, you know, a couple million uh, in fact already. So how is the imp- pandemic uh, impacting your uh, your region? And uh, we were investing in Africa. It's, it seems a, not a lot of uh, cases out there. It's what's go- really going on there. And uh, in different regions and uh, um, the impact in terms of investments and our future, you know, risk and return for file. Um, Aubrey, let's, let's uh, start with you again. Right. I mean, I read the reports and that China might be the only major economy to grow GDP this year. And the uh, next possibility is the Vietnam. And uh, it seems like everybody is hurting and, uh, by, by the pandemic. And uh, I read uh, an uh, article, a uh, research report by uh, Parsifal on China's uh, you know, donations and, uh, into uh, Latin, uh, Latin America countries and uh, there's donations you know, into African countries too. And there's some loan forgiveness too. Seems like China has been uh, contributing uh, to you know the the partners and to fight the the, the virus. And uh, but I just read the news and the, the vaccine donated by Chinese government were turned down, and in South African countries. And uh, I'm just uh, wondering what's uh, you know um, uh, what's uh, you know the view over there in terms and are we needing help or are are we getting the help? How how are we gonna get get the you know get the, out of the this pandemic situation in uh, in South America? Yeah, first of all, in, in Ted. Great, thanks, Ted. Uh, we'll finish on time, and uh, thanks for the great panel for sharing with us. And uh, uh, back to you, Jeremy. Thank you very much, Jerry. Thank you for a great job moderating, <clears throat> and thank you to our panelists, Aubrey, Lena, Parsifal, and Ted. That was fascinating. 